E does not equal MC squared. Hi forum, thank you for being such a curious bunch and clicking on this video. As a gift to you, I'm going to assure you that this video is not just clickbait. When you think of Einstein's famous equation E equals MC squared, you probably associate it with mass and energy being equivalent. And while this is kind of true, there's more to the equation than meets the eye. This is a simplified version of the real equation E squared equals MC squared squared plus PC squared. This equation tells us that the total energy of a particle is not just due to its mass, but also its momentum. Take a look at the relationship between E and MC squared as represented here on Desmos. First, let's set C equal to the speed of light. Then let's set M to some number. To start, I'll start with the number one. Then let's create a variable V and set it to the speed of the particle. For example, let's set V equal to one, meaning we are moving one meters per second and let's set the upper bound to be C. Now let's set our momentum, P, equal to MV, mass times velocity. Let's create capital P, which is going to be the energy contribution to a particle's overall energy from its momentum. This quantity can be shown as the bottom leg of a right triangle with this following equation. Now let's add a variable M to represent the mass contribution to energy and set that equal to MC squared. Now let's create the height of this triangle with the following equation x is equal to p as long as y is between 0 and m. Now let's set d equal to the ratio between the contributions to our particles energy due to mass and momentum. And let's set our hypotenuse of our triangle with the equation f of x is equal to dx between 0 and p. And now to get the length of this hypotenuse, which is proportional to the total energy of the particle, we can use e is equal to the square root of m squared plus p squared. Note how increasing the velocity to the speed of light results in D being equal to 1, or capital P being equal to capital M, which means that the contribution of energy due to mass is equal to the contribution to the total energy from momentum. This equation shows us that a massive particle will always have more energy due to mass than due to momentum, because the only way the energy from momentum could ever be greater than the energy due to its mass is if the particle was moving at the speed of light. Well, there you have it. I guess light really is the speed limit of the universe. Or is it?